atom of radium reaches St. Louis. Remember, we talked about the spintheroscope in that article. And I want to show you what else they were finding with the spintheroscope. This is from 1903, right? They mentioned this exact scientist and this device he created. He created this basically just to look at this. Washington University purchases Crook's spintheroscope with minute quantity. Blend, pitch blend, blend, shines with stars. Emanations from mystery of science cause zinc sulfide screen to scintillate like galaxies of the universe. In the arrival yesterday of the spintheroscope at Washington University, St. Louis is no longer without a sample of the greatest scientific wonder of the age, radium. The spintheroscope is an instrument designed by Sir William Crook to show one of the properties of radium, the scintillations that occur when the particles thrown off by the radium salt strike a screen of zinc blend. As a most minute and almost under- Weightable quantity of radium is sufficient to cause these characteristic little flashes of light. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here. It's kind of hard to read. Some of these articles can just not have the greatest um, resolution. So before we move on, we're looking at the, a, a, a rough, a rough representation of the spin, spin theroscope. Spin theroscope. Here it is. Okay, right here. We're looking at the screen scintillations okay radium zinc sulfide screen think of this like the firmament and radium beyond the firmament in the waters above characteristics sufficient to cause the characteristic little flashes of light the instrument is in the reach of all colleges and institutions of learning the spinceroscope is a small brass tube closed at one end the other bearing a lens this is all that's shown when the instrument is looked at in the light. Take it into the dark room, and after the eye has become accustomed to the darkness, a wonderful phenomenon takes place. The tube begins to glow, or rather, the glow from the tube becomes apparent to the eye. A faint blush light that becomes stronger and stronger the longer one looks is seen. One might take it for the glow of a stick of phosphorus or the light that is given off when a handful of parlor matches are gently rubbed with a moist substance. Such is the appearance of the tube when held at a distance from the eye. Marvelous sight seen. Look through the lens and focus the tube by sliding the end bearing the lens in and out, and soon a marvelous sight meets the eye. Sir William Crook, the discoverer of this curious phenomenon, said in describing the instrument, it was as though I saw the universe as it may appear to its maker. Whole galaxies of stars flashing in view only to disappear and have others take their place. Each separate article impinged upon the screen of zinc blend appeared to the sight as a star. Not as single stars did the phenomenon show itself, but as a whole universe coming into being at once making their sharp flashes and then disappearing to have their places taken by others. It is an expression of the infinite that infinite minds may grasp. Smallest body known. The radium ray is the smallest body that is known. It is so much smaller than the atom, which was regarded as the smallest possible quantity of matter that could exist. That if the atom were magnified to the size of an orange, the particles that radium is continually throwing off would be visible under the microscope. That these emanations have corporate existence has been proven by a number of methods, all tending to confirm the original investigations of Lord Kelvin, who was the first to measure them. They and other similar phenomena, such as the X-rays, were formerly supposed to be a peculiar kind of light and were regarded as waves in the ether movements and not bodies. The radium in the Washington University spintheroscope is in the form of radium bromide and has a radioactivity of 300,000 the power of uranium to ionize air being taken as the standard. The instrument 
will not be placed on public ex exhibition for some time. Public lectures may be given at a later date when the spinceroscope is exhibited. Apologies. <clears throat> so yeah, the instrument will not be placed on public exhibition for some time. Of course, they have much to learn. The fact that even this amount of information reaches the public is so fascinating and fantastic and why I've fallen in love with these newspapers over the last several years. <sighs> so much to talk about in there. Um, yeah. When we talk about zinc, salt, um, and the fact that when viewed with the right device, the radium looks like a galaxy, right? And we just spent uh, the previous few minutes discussing the relation of the sun and its creation and how it's directly related to helium. And the sun and radium's breakdown derive helium just as part of its action and when we talk about lead to gold we're talking about lead to radium we're talking about density and the re the recycling that happens and then how radium is at the very end and its breakdown breakdown its emanations create helium and yeah i want to finish this off with a small little excerpt i had much more to talk about um but i'm out of time so i want to zoom in right here real quick is the sun radium 1916 is the sun radium there is no doubt says walter munder writing on the origin of the sun's heat the discovery of radium compels us to abandon completely some of the conclusions based upon present theories of the origin of the sun's heat W.E. Wilson calculates that 3.6 grams of radium per cubic meter of the sun's volume would supply the entire output of the sun's energy. He further suggests that the temperature of the sun radium may be much more energetic at our terrestrial temperatures. If so, a much warmer weight, a much smaller weight of radium per cubic meter may suffice. The computations which Lord Kelvin and other leading men of science have made as to the possible length of time in the past and in the future during which the sun could maintain its present energy of radiation are necessarily entirely set aside. For we can no longer assume that the concentration of the sun's substance from indefinite distance has been the sole or even the chief source of its energy. It is not only that radium itself may exist in sufficient abundance in the sun to account for its energy, but the same or similar radioact radioactive properties may be possessed by others in its elements or by the sun itself as a whole or by the sun itself as a whole exactly professor g h darwin this is darwin's father believe it or not writes knowing as we know now do that an atom of matter is capable of containing an enormous store of energy in itself i think that we have no right to assume that the sun is incapable of liberating atomic energy to a degree at least comparable with that which it would do if made of radium. <laughs>